Good evening, everybody. As promised, um, it's about time we got back to looking at Ericose's videos, um, or as he was affectionately known by me as Dude, Duda, El Duderino, his Dudeness. Um, he responded to all of those and a few others besides, which I will not go into just yet. Um, I think uh, Mark Codinet's favourite one was Dicky. Um, but anyway, as I say, um, what can I say about the dude that I haven't said before? Just, just a huge character, um, immensely loved by so many people, hugely missed by so many of us. Um, but at least we have got his videos to look back on um, and, and simply to admire um, the uh, the expertise of the fellow, the just the sheer humanity of Eric Ozy, the dude. You know, um, there was there was there wasn't anything he 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 wouldn't do for somebody. If if, if you asked him to do something, he, yeah. he would he would try and help you. Um, um, just 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 a really really nice fella. You can understand why he had so many friends. He is just. <laughs> Just, just a brilliant guy. Um, obviously, miss him greatly. But anyway, let's um, let's not dwell on that, and, and let's let's enjoy. Um, I'm going to split this video into two halves. Um, so, part one this evening. It's quite a long video, so that's my reason for wanting to uh, share it with you in two halves. Let's stick me up there. Let's sit back and enjoy Eric Jose making a murderer, Michael Bell, and what does a law enforcement cover up look like? Um, if you're if you're not familiar with the case of Michael Bell, don't worry. I I think that throughout the course of the video you'll get the idea. Okay, um, just to say that Michael Bell was um, a victim of law enforcement cover-up, a bit like Michael Funk. Um, slightly different place. I think he was Kenosha. But you know me. I don't think I, I know. Anyway, let's, uh, let's go full screen and let's sit back and enjoy some classic Ericosa. Hello, everybody. You have tuned in to Ericosa on Making a Murder on YouTube. I cover virtually any aspect of making a murderer I go over the evidence the documents the photos so if you'd like stay tuned and in the future I'll have many more videos besides the one you're about to see hello everybody we're here today to talk about what corruption looks like this is gonna be having to do with a case in Wisconsin very nearby well it's in Wisconsin it's in Kenosha and basically, this is going to be like textbook 101, what it looks like when law enforcement band together and cover something up. It's a textbook example, I'm telling you. This this is a this case is kind of really sad. It's really sad what happened, and you can't be help you can't help but ask yourself in the end when you find out all the particulars about it. You can't be. You can't help but wonder to yourself, what was the cops? What were those law enforcement officers thinking and doing? Because number one, it didn't go down the way they said. And so, why were they telling a story? Why were they? Why were they so eager to tell a story that wasn't the truth? And why did this young man end up dead by the, <coughs> in the way, and with the circumstances in which that it happened, which are very, very sketchy to be perfectly honest and part of the reason why I say that is you'll see in this video is about the the book the, the the print the from the then the muzzle print that was left on Michael Bell's uh, basically temple um, on his right temple which is the opposite of the, the way that you know the, the way that the cops say it went down 
Anyways, the muzzle print there proves that he was shot on that side and the gun was pressed to his head. The officers say that they shot from the other side and it's, it's crazy, but the forensics ended up coming out in this case and proving that the officers were, were, were basically telling a story that was not true. And eventually, you know, Michael Bell's father received a settlement from the, from the state and stuff, but, and, and he went on to do some other things, but I'm going to post a link obviously to, to, to the full video. Um, I'm going to be showing you kind of an excerpt from it here tonight to kind of show you just like exactly what it looks like when officers are covering something up. But I'm going to post the link to the full video down below for everybody who wants to go and see it. It's going to have, it's going to give you a little bit of background on, on Michael Bell himself. You know, he's basically a, a young man. He was 21 years old. He, uh, he was actually just beginning to start a business. He, he, like most, like most people at 21 was having a little bit of, you know, to do with alcohol and was, you know, obviously learning and figuring out how to moderate and, and, you know, just come to grips and, and, and learn how to responsibly consume alcohol, obviously. So he, he there, there's, you know, there's that, but by no means was he up to anything that warranted the kind of action you see in this video and what you hear about. I mean, you know, I just, I don't see where, how they honestly believed that this kid was as much of a danger as they try to say he was, uh, especially when, when the explanations come out as to how one um, officer's holster got moved from the side to like the front of his belt. Um, you know, especially when all that stuff starts getting explained and, and it's obvious that this was all, this was all there for the original investigators to, to figure out. But when, when it all starts getting explained that it was actually the side view mirror of the car that they had slammed Michael up against when he was trying to run into his house, um, the mirror had pulled on this officer's gun. And this officer was saying that Michael was grabbing his gun. And the other officer, and this is where it gets tricky. This is where it gets extremely tricky because the, 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 the witnesses, which Michael's mother and sister were standing 10 feet away being blocked by an officer that wouldn't let them get any closer. And that's when they say Officer Gonzalez ran up and was on Michael's right side and and fired and put the gun up against Michael's head and fired a shot. The the Kenosha uh, uh, police department ends up claiming a completely different thing. So that's what this video is going to be showing you. It's basically just like I said, anatomy of what it looks like when, you know, law enforcement officers band together to cover something up and it usually doesn't just stay at the law enforcement level. It, it, it kind of goes up higher. You know, other people tend to co-sign and, and sign off that nothing happened until so much proof comes out that it can't be denied anymore. And then suddenly they decide that they want to try and go ahead and, and offer compensation and do those sort of things, right? But for those who always say, oh, how can you believe law enforcement could do these things? How could you believe that a law enforcement officer would, would do this or that or plant or blah, 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 blah. Okay, this is how people... This right here, what you're about to see. This is how you can believe it because you're going to be able to see it right here with your own eyes. So, let's get to it. It was November 9th, 2004. Michael Bell was parked in front of his house. Officer Eric Strausbaugh ordered Michael to take a breath test, even though the officer's dash cam had revealed no erratic driving. When Michael refused, things quickly escalated. And after being kicked and tased, Michael tried to run up the family driveway. During the struggle, Officer Eric Widener kept Michael's mother and sister at bay. Lieutenant David Kruger was holding Michael from behind in a bear hug. Officer Strausbaugh began screaming that Michael had taken the officer's gun. This led a fourth officer, Albert Gonzalez, to run up to Michael with his gun drawn and at the command of Lieutenant Kruger to shoot Michael in the head. The Kenosha police report stated that Michael was shot because he posed a lethal threat to the four officers. But the evidence told a different story. No fingerprints or DNA from Michael Bell were found on the gun or holster. 
and according to four eyewitnesses, as shown in this recreation photo, Officer Gonzalez stood between Michael and Officer Strausball, while Lieutenant Kruger held Michael from behind. This should have allowed Gonzalez to confirm that Michael did not have Strausball's gun. But even though there was no forensic evidence that Michael Bell grabbed Strausball's gun or holster, it appeared that someone or something had indeed come into violent contact with the weapon. So much so that the officer's holster had been yanked out of position from his hip to the front of his body, causing his terrified screams. But if Michael Bell didn't grab the gun, who or what did? Eight years later, a private investigation would reach a startling conclusion. Brad, Tammy, this is an affidavit from a former Kenosha police detective. It includes his theory of what happened that night in November of 2004. He concludes a car parked led to a fatal police shooting. Michael was right here. Michael Bell stands where his son died in the driveway of the family's Kenosha home. I can consider this kind of like a holy spot, you know. I mean, this is where your son lost his life, right here at this place. But Bell isn't here to mourn. He's here to demonstrate what he and his private investigators believe happened in the moments leading to the death of Michael E. Bell. I have no problem with the fact that the officer might have made a mistake. That is part of his line of duty. Well, that alleged mistake revolves around the driver's side mirror. Fox 6 obtained an affidavit from retired Kenosha detective Russell Beckman. Beckman, who spent nearly 30 years with the Kenosha police, states any reasonably competent investigator committed to objectivity and the truth would have been able to determine Officer Strasbaugh's holstered handgun was caught and captured by the driver's side mirror. He states, the officers involved, and more than likely, the supervising and investigating police officials chose not to tell the truth. The report noted that the mirror had been at the very center of the struggle, leaving it broken and hanging by a cable. It also noted that the KPD virtually ignored the mirror in its findings. In November of 2004, the prospect of a very human but fatal error loomed over the Kenosha Police Department. But rather than leave no stone unturned, its investigation was concluded in less than three days. The district attorney said that Michael was shot because the officers believed they were in imminent danger of death and lethal force was necessary. Not addressed was the lack of Michael Bell's fingerprints or DNA on the weapon. The mirror was not mentioned as a possible culprit. The bullet that killed Michael Bell was not analyzed and multiple witnesses had not been contacted for follow-up interviews. But the officers were awarded citations for meritorious service. The case was closed, but searing questions remained. Okay, so you see here so far what what has happened. That they, by the four witnesses, two of which were Michael's mom and sister who were standing just like 10 feet away, um, you know, being detained by one officer, being held back, but basically 10 feet away, and two others, because there's four total, they say, that saw exactly what happened where Gonzalez came up on Michael's right side and put the gun to his head okay that's where the the muzzle print was so that that for the muzzle print to be there means the gun had to be there okay so that so that's where we're at so that's where the forensics of this also backs up the witnesses accounts okay here's the rub I mean here's what they're getting at with that is that if that's the case then officer gonzalez was running up on the side where he would clearly be able to see michael's hands and officer kruger's gun he would be able to see that running up on that side he would be able to see that clearly and he would he would be able to notice oh he's not touching that gun because there was no dna or fingerprints on that gun there was no DNA or fingerprints from, from Michael Bell on the gun. Nothing on it. It got, like I said, and like they proved here with the private investigator and stuff, it got moved in the struggle when they broke the, the driver's side mirror of that car that they, you know, all slammed up against when they were, you know, detaining him, or you know, basically. And once they got him, you know, in a bear hug and, and pinned, you know, where his legs were pinned in between the officer and the fender of the car... They start panicking, 
And one officer runs up and, and shoots him pretty much kind of execution style. Now, what happens here, what we're going to see happening here now is where the officers come back with their version of events. Um, it's going to come into play because of the way that the, the angle of the shot through Michael's head um, is going to come into play. But the fact of the matter is, is that these cops are so bold in trying to cover the, up their mistake and cover up whatever it was that they were doing here. That they try to claim that they shot in the opposite direction from the left side of Michael's head to the right side and like through the windshield. The windshield was not broken. There's nothing, the windshield was untouched. The, the evidence doesn't support that, but this is what the, I mean, so, so we're going to get into it right now, and, and, and you're going to see just how far, how, how much that these officers are willing to go to, to back up this cover-up lie that they're telling. You, no matter, and almost, pretty much almost no matter what proof comes out that proves them to be lying, they continue to maintain that they told the truth. It's 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 amazing to watch. So, you know. Also, one other thing I wanted to point out. Did you see that little bit back right there just before I came in and started talking about awards? Hmm. That they were the, the officers involved with this were given awards. Yeah. When the when the family was feeling kind of outraged mm -hmm. over what happened and the lack of investigation and how quickly it was just like swept under the rug. And those officers were given awards. Yep. Sound familiar? Yep. Does that sound familiar to yep. anything, you know? Yep. A couple of investigators in another case who yep. bullied a poor 16-year-old kid mm -hmm. who was highly suggestible into a confession who got awards for their <laughs> stellar work. Yeah. What is it with, with with what is it with Wisconsin rewarding just bad behavior in my mind? You know the way that that uh, Fassbender and Wiegert extracted that horrendous train wreck of a story from Brendan that changed and had no consistency whatsoever. You know that that you know. Anyways, that's what that that struck me when I saw that about these officers getting awards. I just thought I'd point that out. So. Let's move on to the rest. Well, hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Let's, uh, hold on a sec. Let's, uh, let's, let's stop that. The police should have been able to confirm that Michael did not have Straussball's gun. But instead, Lieutenant Kruger ordered Gonzalez to shoot, and he did. The Bells further contended that the KPD knew it had made a tragic mistake and then initiated a cover-up. Sorry about that. It took me a, a few a few clicks to get sorted. Um, hopefully, I've not sorted too much for you. I think possibly quite a few of you know about this case, the Michael Bell case. Um, but yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, how uh, police officers that mess up, they then get awarded with, uh, you know, uh, commendations and awards. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? When you think of Andy Colburn, you know, um, messed up with the uh, phone call in the, the, f from Green Bay over the uh, Gregory Allen thing. Um, and then Link, James Link, is want to promote him to be the sheriff, and he's only a sergeant. He's he's, he's not even in charge of road patrol. Um, <laughs> you know, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? You know, um, you do something wrong, somebody else covers up for it, and then they're happy to, you know, because you're on their side. You're you're part of that uh, thin blue line, if you if you were. Um, Anyway, um, as I say, I hope I haven't spoilt um, too much for you. We will resume from where the where the dude left off. Um, I, I know that this the Michael Bell case, the 
Michael Funk case. Another one that he was very interested in, obviously Scott Davis, but also Devante Sanford. Um, particularly because um, Michael Bell, Michael Funk, they're in Wisconsin. And, and who's in charge in Wisconsin at the time? None other than Brad Schimmel. Who again is quite happy to push everything under the carpet and then just to move on as he did, and he's now a judge. And it's 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 very worrisome. Very worrisome. Anyway, as, as usual, if you want to leave your comments below, um, I will post the link to the video if you would like to watch it all the way through, but I'll cover the second half tomorrow, hopefully. Okay. Catch you soon. Bye for now.